This is a Lexus RZ, and it's a little bit like YouTube Shorts. Much in the same way that YouTube was a leader with video, but was late to the party with vertical short form content, Lexus was an early adopter of electrification with its hybrids, but this is actually its first ever built from the ground up electric car. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you whether it's better than its competitors from Mercedes, Audi, and BMW. I'm also gonna tell you what's good about it, what's not so good about it, and of course, I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from naught to 60 miles an hour, because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, car wow. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the Lexus RZ. And I'm gonna be a bit negative to begin with. I'm gonna use a stick of truth to show you that I've got some fake vents there, there's some more on the front. It's not good, but everything else is. I love the design of the rear. It just looks right with the Lexus badge, the full length light bar, and these cute little spoilers. Down the side, once again, I really do like the shape. It looks good in profile with all these creases. They're creases that work and look good, unlike the creases on the BMW iX, which sort of crease me up. Alloy wheel sizes start at 18 inches, which I think visually a bit too small. These are the 20s, they look really nice. If you want, you can get this car in two-tone paint. This is what it looks like. And as we move to the front, being an electric vehicle, there is no need for a huge grill like you have on other Lexuses, but they still got that spindly shape like on their other vehicles. But it works for me. Integrates nicely with the lights, and there is a little grillage down below, which gives you enough cooling for the motors and the batteries. I think this car, looks better than a Tesla Model Y, a Mercedes EQE, and it's pretty much as good looking as an Audi Q8 e-tron. But what do you think? You can let me know in the comments. Anyway, the starting price of this is just under £65,000. You can compare the prices here on CarWow. They actually go up to £75,000, which is what this car is, because it's the range-topping Takumi model. Now, if you're thinking about changing your car, you can do it all through CarWow. You can sell your current car through CarWow and have dealers all across the the country bid on it to make sure you get a great price for it and compare prices and offers on the car you plan to buy next. If you want to do that now, just click on the pop-out banner up there that should be appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen or follow the link in the description. If you want to do that at a later date or tell your friends and family about it, just simply Google Help Me Car Wow and we will help you change your car. But while this car looks great on the outside, is it as cool on the inside? Do you know what? I think I like the interior of this Lexus even more than the exterior. You have this like driver's pod here, which feels very futuristic and it blends nicely with the rest of the dash, which actually feels very high quality. In fact, all the materials are lovely. I like the damping on all the buttons, dials and switches. Oh, that is actually quite satisfying. So too is the texture of the material used on the steering wheel. It's not leather, it's some fake leather, but it has a slight velvety feel to it. Makes you want to caress it, which is weird. As for the seats, on this Takumi, you get a fake suede, but all of the models have fake leather, and it feels quite nice. It's here on the center console. Speaking of which, I like the drive select mode here, very easy to use, and all the buttons in this car are well laid out. I particularly like the fact that even though you've got this big infotainment screen, Lexus hasn't decided to put the controls for the climate buried within it. Key controls such as fan, temperature setting, and controls for the heated seats, steering wheel, and cooling of the seats is all just done directly with visible buttons. That is good. So too is the infotainment system itself. It's pretty responsive nice crisp graphics and you can quite quickly just whip through the different menus like that. What's not so good about it is the fact that while you get wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto has to be wired. And that brings me on to the main digital driver's display, which is actually a little bit on the small side. For instance, the actual digital driver's display itself takes up about half the area of the instrument binnacles. The other area is just for warning lights, which will probably never ever come on because it's a Lexus. Another thing is that the graphics are a little bit dull, though you can get quite a decent bit of information through that screen. However, overall, I think that the digital driver's display you get in the Mercedes EQE SUV is superior. And to see my video on that car, 
click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. One other thing I'm not quite so keen on is the fact that there isn't much of a footwell. As a result, the seats are quite close to the floor, so you don't have that much under thigh support here in the front. You can increase that under thigh support by jacking the chair up, but then you're gonna start running into headroom issues. It's a little bit weird, really, and I can show you exactly what I mean, because here's a cutaway of me sat in the front of a Skoda Kodiak, which is another SUV, but not electric, with batteries under the floor. And as you can see, there's better under thigh support. Just seems a bit more like an SUV to sit in than this. I can't fault the fact that you've got lots of adjustment in the steering wheel though. And overall, the driving position in this Lexus is pretty good. So too is connectivity. So here we have three USB-Cs, so you can charge plenty of mobile devices. Plus, you have a charging pad down here as well. In terms of storage, you have a cubby under here, which can be accessed both ways. There's cup holders here, and they'll easily accommodate bottles bigger than that. There's large door bins, and if I open this flap, some more storage under there as well. Up here, you have a place for your sunglasses, which is lined with felt so you don't scratch the lenses. Now, I like the interior of this. However, what's it like in the back? Well, there's good and there's bad. Knee room, that's good. Headroom is all right, but you can make it better by reclining the seat backs. Also, there's plenty of foot space because you've got a completely flat floor. But that brings you on to the bad. You see with the batteries underneath, like in the front, you haven't really got a footwell, so the base of the seat is quite close to the floor. As a result, there's not much under thigh support. For instance, compare that to how I sit in the back of a Skoda Kodiak, you'll see there's much more under thigh support with that. What you need to do is get the person in front of you to lift up their seat a bit so you can stretch out underneath the front seat. And then it's pretty good and it does feel roomy, unless you're trying to carry three in the back at once. It's okay, but shoulder room is a little bit tight. It's a bit better when it comes to fitting a child seat. While the rear doors don't open that wide, they're still big enough to get in a big bulky seat. And while the ice fix anchor points don't have little flaps to cover them, the actual bars themselves, which you attach the seat to, protrude quite away so it's easy to locate them and get the child seat into place. And there's just enough room here in the back that you don't have to move the front passenger chair forward to accommodate a big rear facing seat. Other things that I like, two USB-Cs there, a 220 volt three pin charging socket there, which will actually charge a laptop, some decent pockets on the seat backs, some moderate door bins there, windows that go all the way down, and cool door handles. Look at this, you just press the button and it opens. And the thing I like about that is that they've integrated the safety release, say if you run out of battery, into that button. So you pull it instead like that to open it normally. So you can get out if there's no battery power. One last thing to show you is this. You have an armrest. It's just a shame that the cup holders are exposed so you always end up putting your wrist in it. And that brings on to the boot. Is it any good? So the luggage capacity is 522 litres. By comparison, that's two litres more than an EQE SUV and 22 litres more than a BMW iX, though it's about 50 litres less than an Audi Q8 e-tron. Nice square shape, no load lip to lift stuff over, like that. Some of that luggage capacity is this underfloor storage with loads of room for your cables and the like. And I do like this feature. The low cover is just this flimsy little foldable device. Does the job and it's easy to store underneath the false floor. Look, brilliant. You've also got some tie down points here and here and to fold down the rear seats. You just lean in and do that. Right, there we go. And you get a continuous flat floor, which makes it easy to slide items straight to the front when you're loading it. What's not so good is this though. When you fold down the rear seat, the seat belts flop down like this, which means when you put the seat back, they snag. Not only that, you don't have a front boot like you do on a Tesla Model Y. Speaking of which, the total load capacity on a Tesla Model Y is over 800 litres. And that brings up to five annoying things about the Lexus RZ. In its wisdom, Lexus has decided not to fit a through loading hatch to give you access to the boot. It means that unlike in many of its competitors where you can carry two people in the back and longer items, say if you've been shopping for DIY and planks of wood, 
You can't do that in this car. The RZ's towing capacity of 750 kilograms is pretty rubbish, but common for these kind of electric SUVs. However, if you go for the Takumi model, which is the range topper, you can't tow anything. Now, I'm not sure whether that's to do with the fact it has a special extra damper fitted to the front and rear axles across the way like that to give it a slightly better ride quality, and that gets in the way of the tow bar system. Could be that, we asked Lexus, they didn't respond. Either way, you can't tow with a Sakumi. Even though this range topping model has electric seats for the two outer rear seats, there is no separate controls for the climate. It all has to be done through the front screen. Bizarrely, this car doesn't have a glove box. A supposedly family-friendly SUV without a glove box. Nuts! Now, can you name another car that doesn't have a glove box? I've put a pinned comment below. And you can't have this car's sister car, the Toyota BZ4X, because they're the same thing, pretty much. Can't have that car, but name another one, right? Good luck. This car emits so many warning beeps and bongs. You'd be driving along, minding your own business, and beep here, bong there, beep there, beep, bong, bing, bong. It's just crazy. Now, you can turn off the systems, but it can be quite frustrating. There's even one that'll actually warn you if you take your eyes off the road, which is sort of a good thing, but sometimes you have to take your eyes off the road to operate things through this slightly confusing touchscreen. However, that does bring me on to five cool things about this car because it is loaded with safety kits. There's just so many safety systems which help prevent you having an accident. And one of the coolest is something called Safe Exit Assist. So imagine you've been driving, you've parked up, you go to get out and you want to open your door, but something like a bicycle or a jogger runs past you like that, gives you a warning, and it prevents you from opening the door and won't let you open it until that person or bicycle or whatever has gone past. All but the entry level model get a head up display and it's really detailed. As well as your usual speed, it'll have your driving assist information on there as well. Plus it'll highlight which buttons you're pressing on the steering wheel. So you never have to look down, you can just feel your way and actually see which ones are illuminating in the heads up display so you hit the right one. The RZ stereo system uses special noise cancelling technology to counteract any unwanted sounds and to make sure the cabin feels as peaceful and quiet as possible. Also, Lexus has gone the extra mile to make sure quite a lot of the car's functions are as quiet as possible. For instance, check out the windscreen wipers with the wash function. That's pretty blooming quiet, isn't it? And then there's the motors for the electric windows. I hardly heard a thing. Brilliant. You see this mesh pad here underneath the steering column? That's actually a little radiator which will warm your knees while you're driving on cold days. It's a little bit like the old fashioned way of driving along with a little blanket over your lap. Oh. All our Zs get this glass roof as standard. However, the range topping Takumi's has a special feature. If it's a little bit too bright or you have some ugly bugger looking in at you, you can press a button to make them go away. Let's have a look under the bonnet of this Lexus RZ. So, yes, there's no room for any storage there. Bit of a shame. And it's a bit of a shame you don't get gas struts on a car at this price. What you do get is two electric motors. One on the front axle, one on the rear axle, so you have four-wheel drive. And the combined power output is 313 horsepower. The car comes with a 71 kilowatt hour battery pack, which gives a claimed range of 272 miles. But we'll find out how far it really goes on a full charge a bit later on in this video. We'll also see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour, because I'm going to launch it obviously. Now this thing can charge at 150 kilowatts at a DC rapid charger and up to 11 kilowatts on an AC charger. But at home when you only have 7 kilowatts it's going to take you about 10 hours to charge. Now which version of the Lexus RZ should you buy? Bearing in mind there's just one motor battery combination. However there are three different trim levels and what I'm going to do now is configure my ideal Lexus RZ and if you want to see what that car is and the saving available through CarWow, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. Now let's get driving it.
Starting off with in town, what I'm going to do is pull four times on this, what would be a paddle shifter in a normal car, to put me into max regen mode, so when I lift off the accelerator, it does slow a bit more aggressively than when you have it in the other modes. Though, to be fair, it only feels aggressive if you're going quick. At the moment, I've lifted off the accelerator completely, and I'm still rolling forwards, because this thing doesn't have one pedal driving. If you want to slow it completely, you do need to transition to the brake. Speaking of the brakes, they are smooth and progressive. Sometimes in electric cars, they can be grabby and feel a bit odd as you transition from regen braking to normal braking, but because Lexus has been doing hybrids for ages, they've sort of got that down pretty well. Now we're going to try the maneuverability, and this is going to be awkward because, look, we've got some cars here that I want to let past, including some really old car. I'm going to do a UE here. I'm going to pop on my camera system so I can see all around me. The turning circle is 11.2 meters average for this kind of car. Will I make it round here without having to back up? Eh, we're going to get all the alarms. But this is really helping me out. I oh, know I've got just enough room. Have I? Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, the steering is nice and light for doing those kind of maneuvers. And I had decent visibility forwards and out the door mirrors. What's not good though is the view out the back. It is awful. Very small little rear window and huge rear pillars. The suspension on this car is pretty good in town. It deals with bumps nicely when you're going slower. However, sometimes if you're on really uneven surfaces, it can fidget a little bit. And another thing I noticed just then, when you go through a pothole, while it does smooth off the edge of the pothole, you do get the car rocking from side to side a little bit, such as you're on a ship on a slightly rough sea. That swaying motion is really the only issue that I have with how this car goes down a road in terms of comfort levels. It is genuinely overall a comfy car to travel in. But what about when you're going faster? Here's a bit of dual carriageway, 70 mile an hour limit. I'm cruising at 40 and I am going to overtake. Yeah, instant, as you'd expect from an electric car. And it's good, the performance. It's not like stellar snap your head back like in a Tesla Model Y. It's quick enough for most people. And when you're going quickly, my God, this is a quiet car. Little bit of road noise, but only because this service is pretty rough. Hardly any wind noise at all. This thing is so well insulated. Really, really relaxing. What is less relaxing though is the efficiency. So it's averaging 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. And when I multiply that out by the capacity of the battery, it means that the real world range is just over 170 miles. It's supposed to do over 270. That's pretty rubbish. Yeah, if you want an electric SUV with a better range, click on the pop out banner up there for the link in the description below to check out my review of the Tesla Model Y. Thing is though, can this Lexus drive down a twisty road better than a Tesla Model Y? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna put it into sports mode, which is awkward. You have to do it pressing this, yeah, done. All that does is just make the throttle a bit more responsive and add weight to the steering. No adaptive dampers here, but here we go. Oh, I'll tell you what, it goes over bumps better than a Tesla Model Y. So the batteries are all mounted nice and low in the floor. That helps keep the center of gravity down. So that should aid the handling. Let's find out. Actually, that's pretty good, you know. I'm going to change the regen to the mid setting though, because when you lift off, there's a little bit too much braking, whereas you want it to be a bit more stable. In the mid setting, it's just like a normal internal combustion engine car with an automatic gearbox. Rolls a bit more through the corners. But yeah, I pulled on a paddle there thinking it was a gear shifter. <laughs> no, put the regen back to mid setting, Matthew. Goes down the road really well. I mean, I'm not going to say it's fun. It's not like a laugh to drive. It's not sporty, but it's more than capable. It doesn't lean that much in the bends at all. And the steering seems pretty accurate. And it's so smooth. Obviously, we've got four wheel drive traction. The car's figuring out exactly how to put its power down in terms of the balance of performance from the rear to the front. It's really quite good. I am surprised. Very, very pleasantly surprised. Oh, this is the tester. No problem at all. Really sure-footed. Yep, this car handles better than you need it to. Final thing to do is to launch it. Lexus says this car will do 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds, but the specialist timing gear here is going to reveal the truth. We're in sports mode. I'm just going to floor the accelerator. Three, two, one, go. Oh, 
5.4 seconds. I'm gonna give it another go. Second time lucky, maybe? There's obviously no launch control. 5.6? One more go. See if it can redeem itself. Okay, Lexus, this is your last go. Come on. Come on, you can do it. 5.3 seconds. Definitely worth doing again and then again. Anyway, decent acceleration, does what Lexus says, and it actually handles better than I ever imagined. So then what's my final verdict on the Lexus RZ? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the RZ. Yes, its range might not be that great, but it's still a really nice electric SUV. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of my verdict in the comments below. If you click on those windows there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow to sell your car the easy way. Just upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. Thanks for watching.